Hey everyone, Leslie with Color Art. Before we start today's uh, video, I just wanted to show you that dried piece from yesterday. Now I'm going to try really hard to show you the big piece I did last night in the same colors. It is a 24 by 36. I may have to put it on the table sideways. I don't know if I can slant this thing up. And I'm going to be getting an iPad soon, so I'll be able to uh, give you like a tour of the studio where I'm working. But if this gives you an indication of what yesterday's piece looked like, last night's piece that I poured, um, I did it in sections. I laid down my cinnamon brown, my uh, custom-made quinacridine gold with that sunflower and ginger peach mixed, a little bit of the sky blue, but I kind of drew this out, penciled out where I knew I was going to leave some white space for some drama, kind of created some lines up here. I drew them on as if they were city buildings in a city because I wanted to have the illusion that this was a cityscape. This would be the line of the water and this would be the reflection below. I'm probably going to touch this up with some Silks Acrylic Glaze. Uh, that's the beauty of paint pouring. You're not stuck with your final thing. You can touch it up. I think I have my camera all the way out. So this is the most I can get this big piece in here, but that gives you an idea. Um, sideways, yeah, it's not going to fit in here sideways. I am so sorry, but sideways, you kind of get an idea of what the water would be like below. And you can definitely get the upside version of what the top looked like. Anyway, a lot of people asked me how last night's piece went. This is a piece I'm getting ready for the gallery. And it was the same colors used in yesterday's little video that we did. That's video number 13. Incidentally, I'm going to renumber the one I did the paint mixing in, call it 13A. And anybody watching future videos, I recommend that you look at video 13A about paint mixing the primer elements. So let's get started with today's pour. I promised everyone that I would use the hot cinnamon that I mixed up yesterday. So we're going to do that. I'm going to do a dirty pour. I was requested a dirty pour with the primer elements. I have my piece of UPO paper that I'm going to test. I want to use the hot cinnamon that we mixed up yesterday in our paint mixing video. Let's see where I have to get this to get the same camera. I'm just going to refresh this mix, stir it up, make sure it's still the right consistency, and it looks like it is. Uh, I have some of this custom made quinacrid in gold. This is uh, about 75% sunflower yellow with some ginger peach added. I just happen to love this color. It is just stunning. It's a, close to a quinacridine gold. I might have to add just a touch of brown to make it a true quinacridine gold, but for day, today's pour, it's going to work. Now, yesterday, I also had some sky blue. And... I'm sure the sky blue is going to be gorgeous in this pour, but red, what is the complementary color to red? It's green. Red also um, is intensified with black. So I'm going to mix up some of this Artist Loft Neon Green just to make it pop in the pour. You guys will get to see a chance of me mixing up um, regular acrylic paint the way I do it with just water. Not too much water, just enough water to sit it down. You never want to go over the 25% threshold. 
If I had to guess how much water I put in my mix, maybe 10%, if that, just enough to get it to the right consistency. And if you're uncomfortable with just using water and you want a little insurance policy for the crazing and any kind of uh, lifting, you can always add a dash of the Liquitex pouring medium. Now I've been told the GAC 800 is also a wonderful product. I've personally not played with it yet, but I do know that the Liquitex pouring medium is universal. It seems to work in everybody's paints, where uh, every manufacturer's paints, where you know, Novaplex works best in Novaplex paint. Uh, until I play with the GAC 800, I can say the GAC 800 probably works best in Golden's paint. That's Golden's product is the GAC. But the Liquitex really is a good universal pouring medium that's so far seen a lot of um, pouring enthusiasts have luck with this. Now again, Anne-Marie Ritterhoff has her own custom mix because everybody's fallen in love with using Floetrol and I told you in my uh, video about paint mixing that Floetrol has a surfactant in it that breaks down the surface tension and you can lose your cells. So if you want to use the Floetrol that you've got, you've invested in Floetrol. Anne-Marie has a really great uh, recipe. Basically, it's to the best of my memory. I'm sure her measurements are a little bit different, but let's say it was 25% Liquitex pouring medium, 25% Floetrol, 25% PVA glue archival, and then she makes her own water with a little bit of baking soda in it. So her final pouring medium is about 25% of all four ingredients. And uh, Cindy Porter, one of our artists, did a test, and she found that when she used the Floetrol alone, she lost her cells. But if she used the Floetrol mixed with pouring medium, the pouring medium stabilized it. So that's why these custom mixes are working with Floetrol in it because they've got the PVA glue and or they've got the Liquitex pouring medium. Okay, I've got my handy little water bottle here. I've got my camera a little bit too far back today. So I've got my Artist Loft Neon Green, my handy little well-loved water bottle, putting in just a few drops. We're going to mix it. The reason why I do it in increments is you want to give the polymer and the acrylic paint and the pigments a chance to receive the water you're putting in. You can't just dump in the water all at once. It will never mix correctly. Some colors will fluff up more. Um, I believe even Melly D on one of her videos, she kept talking about how the white kept swelling up on her, uh, the artist loft white. She'd go back and say, I just thought I had this at the right consistency. It's thick again. So make sure you're checking your artist loft white. But I think this neon green, even though it's a crazy neon green, will uh, pop against our hot cinnamon red, the primary element hot cinnamon red. Now, if you notice, I don't know if you can see this from the side, this still is not really pouring off straight. It's, it's breaking the pour, meaning some of it's coming off, it's breaking, then it's pouring again. What I call the, what I call it yesterday, the plop, plop, fizz, fizz, clump, clump. It just stops and starts. I did it again. So if it stops and starts again, it's not thin enough. You want it to be an even stream. There should be no hesitation of the paint coming off your popsicle stick. See, it still had to think about it. It's still thinking about it. Just a few more drops of water, a few more drops of water. Okay, now I'm going to add some treadmill oil today just so people can see me do that i also if you have it around the house the uh 
WD-40 Specialist Silicone Lubricant is a great spray, but you know, as we are doing this more and more, a lot of us don't want to breathe in the propellants. So um, I found a great dimethicone on Amazon, and I found a great treadmill oil on Amazon. So for those of you who want to use the droppers now, dimethicone is actually used in cosmetics. Someone asked me on YouTube yesterday, it's an oil. Uh, you're not supposed to put Floetrol in oil paint. No, no, I believe Floetrol is saying don't put it in an oil-based paint, something you'd have to clean up your brush with turpentine. Um, dimethicone, though, is actually very water-soluble and is in put in uh, shampoos and body lotions and facial toners. And then the treadmill oil, I believe, since it's called treadmill oil, is an oil lubricant they're using for treadmill, uh, but it also is a silicone, and I like this Type 200. If I could recommend one from the Micro Lubro Company, it would be Type 200. This is the viscosity that you want. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit up in my pipette, put in a few drops, and we're ready to go on the green. I think I'm also going to put a little black in this and I have a tiny bit of black left with silicone. This is a bottle of Artist Loft Black already thinned down with water. So I'm going to squeeze a little bit more in, add some of this treadmill oil, a few little drops. Put the rest back in the bottle. Don't want to waste this precious golden fluid. Great stuff. And uh, stir that in. Ah, see it thickened overnight. The artist loft got a little bit thicker. I need a few more drops of water. Always test your white and black because it can thicken up from the night before. And since I know we've got our colors here, I've got this Artist Lock Neon Green, Sky Blue, Custom Gold, the red, and a little bit of black. I think I'm going to use a couple of these little cups. I don't know, I'm thinking of trying to do, I saw a technique yesterday where someone slid the cups around on it. I'm not sure if I can pull this off. So I'm going to pour, uh, I think I'm going to pour the neon green on the bottom. This is that Artist Loft Neon Green, just a little bit. This is that hot cinnamon red. Oh, there's a hair in there. That would make it very interesting. Yay. Wow, yes. It's a long piece of my hair in this. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, let's put in some of the sky blue. Just for grins and giggles, I'm going to add a tiny bit of white just lightly on top to kind of break this layer. Even though the white will be our background, I'm going to put a tiny bit of white in the actual pour. And by the way, my white is a indoor latex matte house paint mixed with water. A little bit thinner than your normal mix, a little bit juicier. So it, it moves stuff around on the canvas nicely. I think I'm missing my my custom quinacridine gold made with sunflower and ginger peach. And I didn't put black in. I don't want to dominate it with too much black. Just a little bit of black to add some spice to the mix. A 
little more of this green. I'm hoping I have enough paint for the canvas is why I'm trying to judge this. It's been a while since I've done this size. Since the hot cinnamon was the requested color, we can't ignore adding a little bit more of that. I'm just going to add a tiny bit more of each color. Some more of the gold. These are just little drips. These little cups are little two ounce cups. You might, they're smaller than the ones that we used to even get at the old water coolers where it was just like a one gulp. These are tiny little cups I found at the restaurant supply and they're perfect for doing a, uh, a double dirty pour. To stabilize my cup so I can flip them over, this is actually a canvas that still has a plastic on it. When in doubt, use a little ingenuity, right? Okay, so here are my two cups. I instinctually said give them a one stir just to activate the silicone. And I'm going to pull a Rick Cheadle. I see him spray at the last minute on some of them. So we're going to try a little blast of that silicone on top. I hear you guys saying, better you than me, Leslie, that you're trying this with this, this using this canvas. So I'm going to... Pick up the canvas, flip it over. It looks like some of it's leaking out already. Spread these apart. I'm putting down some of the white artist. Actually, this is not artist lock, that's that house paint. And what I saw this lady do yesterday, she literally let, if it's gonna work, she let the cups slide. If it doesn't work, I don't wanna do the drag. Uh, I don't have a lot of luck with the drag so far. Ann Osborne's really an expert at that. So I was hoping that the slide technique would work. I guess not. I'm just going to let it go. Spread this white out while these cells are trying to do their thing. I mean, I could try to completely tilt this like a puddle pour, where the colors are pouring on top of one another. Guess those little paper cups don't work for that slide technique. She did use plastic cups. I don't know if it makes a difference. First time trying that. A friend of mine had sent me that link and said, you guys see this? So I guess it's something I need to practice off camera. I don't 
profess to be an expert at every single technique. I'm pretty comfortable with our paint line. Okay, so let's see what happens when we kind of, even though I like what's happening there, I don't want to lose that. It's funny how both these cups were put together the exact same way and how different they look. I think that is so interesting. I'm okay with leaving some negative space. I don't need to fill this whole thing up. Of course, you probably think I would be the way I'm moving this around. But I'm trying to get to where I just see I'm loving what's happening up here. So I'm going to pull that down. This black has seemed to dominate this. I don't know how that happened because we, as you saw, I poured in the same colors in the cup. So I'm going to move that white down into this. Well, I could almost pour this off and just live with this. That is so pretty. I wonder what I can do that with. I have this little plastic cup. I'm going to see if I can't pour off. Some of that color off the edge. Ooh, it's kind of giving me a flowery look. I like that. Tell you what, I don't want to ruin what's happening here. I'm loving this right here. So I'm going to see, this is where you kind of have to be creative in your process. See if by swiping some of this, there we go, over that white, can I get some kind of pleasing pattern? We have to see what happens. Now, I want to torch this, see what kind of cells we get. And if, if I'm unhappy with this, I can always either move the color around, I can blow it, I can manipulate it. You know, you're not stuck with just what you make. I don't know, part of me wants, I want to mix up in that little batch of color and pour it over there. Either that or I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put some more white over the top of it. Let's just do that. Because I'm liking this pattern that's in the center. See what happens. Okay, that's not too bad. All right, now let me get my torch. I'm going to apologize right now. It's going to be very loud. It's a one of these big canister porches, torches. So here's what I think happened. The black that's in my mix has silicone in it. And I forgot and put silicone in my green. 
And one of the tricks with the primary elements and uh, getting cells is having the color that's in your dirty pore that are opaque has no uh, silicone in it. So I'm getting some cells here, very nice cells where the paint has gone over the top. I really, really don't want to disturb that beautiful color, but it looks like I'm going to have to. So I'm going to see if by swiping gently over the top, Call me crazy, but I just swiped over the whole darn thing. I didn't like what was happening. I wasn't getting cells. I had forgotten to leave the solids in my dirty pour uh, without silicone. Definitely getting cells now. And I think to make it interesting, I'm just going to add some veining of black, real thin veining of black in here. And this is good for you guys to see what happens. You know, even I can make a mistake and forget to leave the silicone out in the solid color. It always helps in a dirty pour if a few of her colors don't have, ooh, this is kind of having a wood grain effect. If some of the colors in your dirty pour do not have silicone, you're going to get a better reaction. This is kind of turning into a seashell pink, but it's kind of pretty. Wow, interesting selling. This didn't go exactly as I planned, but sometimes it doesn't. And that's why us YouTube artists take the risk and do something camera on for on, on the camera for you watching us experiment. So it's better to see what happens if it doesn't turn out exactly as you plan. Stay calm, the piece is not done. Matter of fact, I've got pieces afterwards, even that ones, those ones I painted yesterday. I'm going to go in and I'm going to touch them up with, I'm going to let this sit for a minute, and I'm going to go get a bottle of the Silks Acrylic Glaze and tell you what I will be touching it up with. So in yesterday's video, I did this piece, but after it's dry, I can see some areas where I might want to brush in and touch up that gold or the turquoise. Um, and we have a line of colors called Silks Acrylic Glaze. There are exact same colors. You can get matching colors in the glaze. 
if we don't have them in the glaze, because only 96 of our colors are in the glazes, you can take that pigment that you have, mix it a little bit of glazing medium, and actually make a glaze of your own. Squeeze a little bit out on a paper plate. Oops. <laughs> that one, I think, needs to be shook up. So I've squeezed a little bit of the ginger peach out on the paper plate. I'm in love with this color uh, African Jade. Absolutely beautiful color. And you can do it with your fingers. You can do it with a tiny little paint paintbrush. So right here, I think the, the blue got missed. The glaze is transparent, so when you're touching it up, you can paint an area. You're bringing in that glorious shine, but if you feel like you've got a little too much paint, let me see if I can get a close up on this for you. Let's see an area up here. That's why I was just doing that is over here. Yeah, it was over here. I was painting it just ever so slightly, touching up that teal color with a little bit of glaze. And because the glaze is transparent, you can see the color through the color. Here, I'd like to touch up and maybe make that blue a little bit more dominant right in here. Um, I'm going to take the African Jade and just touch it up. And it's lighter than the sky blue that we use. And if you feel you got a little bit heavy, you can dock it with your finger. This is a great way to touch up and fix your paintings after they're done. Like, I'm sure many of you have pourings that you absolutely love one section of, but you wish that you know, another color had come through. Well, let me tell you about the silks acrylic glaze. They're absolutely fabulous. And I can even make it up. What if I wanted, uh, you know, light blue dot in here? You can see that. Right here. Um, that was just a white dot. I could continue with that teal and accent even my cells with the Silks Acrylic Glaze. If you guys can see me doing this. I wouldn't want to go all the way down, but it doesn't hurt to have an accent. Here, it looks like just a slight bit of that light blue. So if I want to enhance it with the African Jade, I can add more depth and dimension to my work and brighten it up and then even soften it and pushing it with my finger so it's not too bright. These silks glazes are fabulous using to touch up your paintings. Now I also got some of the um, ginger peach. I brought my brush here. See, everywhere I want to paint, it's, it's uh, on the opposite end because of the camera. I'm trying to give you guys a close-up of this. i get my other painting in front of me that's making cells out of the way. Okay, so right here it kind of goes from a dark, dark orange to immediately light yellow. You may like that, you may not like that. But I can gradiate that slightly by touching that up. And now I've accented this area here, making it a little bit richer. That's the beauty of glazes. Glazes are designed, you know, glazing was originally used by oil painters uh, to touch up 
those beautiful oil paintings. They would take color, put it in linseed oil, that hat on the girl with curl earring, and he also painted girl with red hat. He had interesting names for his paintings. The ribbon in the girl with pearl earring on her hat, that blue was glazed. So many of us think that the masters painted those beautiful paintings in just one layer. Well, they didn't. They layered the colors and they worked on them and they created depth and dimension in their work. So you are not defined by just what the first pour looks like. You can go in and accent your paintings any way you like. Like I said, if you feel like it's a little bit too rich, then rub it out with your finger. You're not going to hurt your painting. This is dried from yesterday. Over here, I like where it's a little bit darker, but I'd like a little shadow a little bit darker on one side so it creates a dimension where I sweep that color. Let's see anything else that needs a little bit more orange to it. Or maybe when you swiped it, you felt like some of the orange was lost in that black. You can always dot and touch that up. Here's a little bit white. Looks like it doesn't belong, but boy, with a little accent of a gold. It looks like I intentionally did that. So if you want to sell your work or give these as beautiful gifts for Christmas, don't feel stuck with just the first pour. It's not done until you say it's done. Now I've gotten lost in fixing, I'm gonna fix this painting on camera. Meanwhile, I'm letting this cell set up on my very light seashell pink dirty pour that went awry that I swiped white over the top. But this gives you an idea of what you can do to accent your pieces. See, like this gray, it's pretty, but does it really belong? Now, part of my instinct is to maybe put some of the blue in there because I have that orange over here and then I've got that blue here. But what if I just kind of brought in some of the gold dead center? This is that ginger peach in a glaze straight over the top of where that white and black swiped. And now I'm changing the color of that swipe. Now, I love these little bottles. These little bottles are come, and we have 11 sets, six piece sets, so only 66 come in these little bottles, but these little squeeze bottles are the handiest little thing for squeezing off just enough in your palette. Um, the larger jars are a wide mouth bottle. Remember to close the jar. Too many people will leave the wide mouth jar open. It's the same jar as our primary element, Big Mama, but they open up the wide mouth jar and then they forget and they leave the jar open. This is the larger jar. This is 30 mils and these are 15 mils. This is, these, I love these little bottles. I love these little squeeze bottles. But this is a better value. Just remember to close the jar when you're done using it. But the silks are just Fabulous, fabulous product. Um, so like I said, oil painters used to do the glazing. But as we graduated into acrylic paints, acrylic painters actually just take their acrylic paint and thin it down with water like us paint pourers do and try to use it as a glaze. The problem is if they thin it down with too much water, we know as paint pourers, we're going to lose adhesion. So why not have the same colors mixed in a beautiful silky glazing medium that we know, I'm just touching this up as I'm talking. I'm finding areas where if I enhance that orange just a little bit, how much prettier would it be? See, I've added some more accents and colors to this piece. Let's 
see if I've got a towel here. I don't have any water to rinse this brush off. This wasn't planned, guys. I decided to pull this out and do this for you while that other piece was setting up. So my apologies. I was not prepared with a uh, wash basin to rinse off my brush, but um, I kind of like this sky blue over here. I went with the African J because it's a little bit darker and it's a little bit more teal where the actual color used in this piece was sky blue. And you can also get that in the silks acrylic glaze. I just happen to love African Jade. It's one of my favorite colors. <clears throat> and there's yellow on my fingertip. So I guess I won't be using my fingers because it's turning my African Jade a little bit green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on a minute, I got my water bottle. I can rinse this off. Okay, we can figure it out. I have a squeeze bottle. I'll pour a little water in this cup and I can use it to rinse off my brush. So I don't want to keep tainting that beautiful teal with the orange. So don't be afraid to touch up your artwork and, and don't feel like you're trapped with that pour. There's too many of you that have pores sitting on your shelf that you kind of like one part but don't like the other part and not quite sure what you want to do with the whole thing. I'm going to just take a chance and put some of this blue here. Let's see if I like that. Can't seem to do that here, sorry. But this area that kind of turned white and gray and I got no cells, I'm just going to kind of touch up with some of this African Jade and add a little accent to my piece. So enough with the Silks Acrylic Lace. These also come from Color Art. I use Ginger Peach and I use the African Jade in this little portion. And by the way, the large purple color that I put in here to show you the color, this is called Periwinkle. In case you guys ask. Okay, so you know, I've touched it up. I've even got a little bit more bling and shine into it because especially take a look at this side. You can see how the size is glowing. Yes, the silks acrylic glaze have some iridescence to them. So you can touch up your painting with an iridescent accent, your paint pouring after you're done. Okay, let's have a look at the piece we just did. It looks like it's a very light earth tone seashell pink. Sorry for the reflection of the light here. We got some interesting cells where I swiped. It's not the colors I was planning. I promise you in my next dirty pour, I'll remember that my solid colors have no silicone. It's been a while since I've done a dirty pour. I've been kind of a swipe girl lately. Uh, but when in doubt, you can always swipe over your colors with an opaque color like my white house paint. Save your piece and get some cells. Thank you for joining me guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. See you later and remember to be good to each other. Bye-bye.